for another session of training we have tonight. Tonight we'll be covering on leadership. I believe leadership is very, very important in the Christian move of God. Uh, what we have tonight is actually training people to be in the leadership. You are part of the training to be in the leadership of God. Yeah. Even though some of us are not functioning as leaders in terms of you do not have a home meeting of your own or a Zoom meeting of your own right now, you are supporting the role, but you're under training. The day will come that God will utilize all of us for this function that is to lead others onto Christ. And uh, this is just the foundational work we are doing right now. The day will come where all of you will rise up to the occasion. And uh, whatever you learn, this will be the nuggets of truth that you have. And it will be applicable at all times when we serve the Lord together. Amen. And uh, it is so important today, even as I speak in many meetings over the last few weeks, I found that many people lack the understanding of the basic word of God, and they do not understand at all what is going on and what is required in their life. And it's very sad. And uh, I find that almost 99% people doesn't know what God wants them to do. You agree? Yes, agree. And to me, it saddened me because uh, the Jewish people were called onto God to be a kingdom of priests. Because they did not recognize the Messiah, they did not recognize what Jesus tried to do for them. They failed to see it. And today, they are no longer the priests that the Lord called them to be. They are still looking for the Messiah. And now it comes to us, the Gentile church or Christians today. And we found God, but we also forgotten what God wants us to do and most of the people do not understand that at all and it is really if you ask me it's looked like impossible to get people to really come to really know what god wants and it's difficult because uh, even after some 15 years of speaking about the kingdom we have only a handful of people who can see a little bit or see, see it. Uh, there are people still struggling to find their footing as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. And if you in the training do not understand this, what about people outside the training? They are even much worse. So if you ask me, it is really impossible to really get people to, to really find God you know, in the kingdom. And, um, well, God specialized in impossibility. Remember Moses, uh, God used Moses to open up the sea for the Jewish people to cross through. They crossed through River Jordan and they came to uh, Mount Moriah or Jerusalem. And all things happened even though it was impossible. To lead two million people out of Egypt is an impossibility. And to, to culture these people in the wilderness is an impossibility. To provide for them for 40 years in the wilderness is an impossibility. And finally, when they were in the promised land, uh, to get them to do what they, God called them to do is also a big struggle. But yet, through all this, God has managed to do it. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah, tonight we are talking about Christian leadership. <clears throat> you, say, you can see the first slide is the leader is leading the group. The arrow is pointing to the direction and there are people upholding the leader. Uh, leadership in the world is like this. And so is leadership in the Christian community or the church. Would you agree before we, we, we continue? Yes. The church is structured like this. So tonight, we're going to talk about Christian leadership and what truly is Christian leadership. 
you want to cover this important point because I think you agree with me there are cracks starting to appear in the Christian foundation. What do you think? What are the cracks that is appearing in the Christian foundation or the spiritual foundation we have today? Can you identify some of the cracks? Right. Right. But that is a very general thing, right? We, we want, I want you to tell me what is going on with Christianity today, you know, uh, to get it to the root of the problem. We need to discuss this because if everything is fine, there isn't the point of training you tonight. Okay. Uh, the training tonight is to correct what is wrong with the spiritual foundation. What is going on? apart from what you think is pride, is there immorality in the church? Yes. Is there abuse of power? Yes. yes. Is there autocratic leadership? Yes. yes. Okay. So there are many yes to the problems that I tell you. And these are the cracks that appear in the Christian foundation. The cracks reveal the truth to you, all right? I'm going to go through some of these cracks so that it will reveal what is wrong with us. It is a foundation problem. I'm sure you have seen before buildings like this collapse. We have one in Malaysia, Highland Tower. Remember that? About 20 over years ago. Yes. And we have a lot in China, okay? Building collapsing after they, they were built. Why do you think the building collapsed? Poor foundation. The foundation not strong. Foundation is not strong. And this application applies to spiritual foundation as well, that if the foundation is not strong, then it will collapse. Now, I'm going to show you in a very simple slide where our foundation is built on, yeah? The Christian foundation. This is a medieval uh, block, wooden block printing that shows you the two perspective of uh, leadership. On the left-hand side, what do you see? Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. Jesus washing the feet. Then on the right-hand side, what do you see? Some, there are somebody worshipping the person on the throne there. Okay, you see that. Now I'm going to show you another slide. This is a Roman Catholic church. The people are prostrating before the Pope. See that? Is that a defective foundation? Yes. Yes. It is defective because Christ is no longer the head of the church. You may say that is the Roman Catholic church. You may say that is the Roman Catholic Church, but today this manifests in denominational churches and Pentecostal church as well. All right, but it 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 manifests in different form. And I recently got a news from Gateway Church. Many people are leaving Gateway Church and they are suing the church for the tithes and offering they have given. They want to take back the tithes and offering. The reason is, this Gateway Church I'm talking about is in America. And the reason is because they have collected a lot of money, about 15 million US dollars. And, and they collected this, they say, to further God's kingdom. And how much money they use to further God's kingdom? 1.5 million. The rest of it is question mark where the money go to. So it become a big hoo-ha in America and there is lawsuit against the church. It appears in different form. Okay? And you can see it, the cracks are appearing. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you some of the more extreme ones yeah we have famous preachers owning 
not one private jet, two or three private jets. And this pastor by the name of Kreffler Dollar is defending his appeal for a new 65 million private jet. He already got a private jet, you know, but he said already he need a new one. So he's asking the congregation to give him money to buy a 65 million US dollars private jet. You think that is correct? No. I think I also better ask you all to give me some money so that I can uh, fly, you know, my urgent meeting, fly back to Malaysia and then fly back to UK. You should also buy me, buy me a private jet because I am head of the kingdom move, you know. All right. Should I behave like that? Should I go that direction? I can believe God as long as I want to. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. Now you see why the devil tried so aggressively to discredit my voice. asking his members for six five million dollars. I ain't never ask you for a dime. Plane's 30 years old. I knew it was time to begin to believe God uh, for a, a new airplane. Our current ministry plane is no longer usable. We need your help. And I ask all of our partners globally to get on board with Project G650. discover life on Mars. If you think a $65 million plane was too much, if they discover that there's life on Mars, they gonna need to hear the gospel and I'm gonna have to believe God for a billion dollar space shuttle because we got to preach the gospel on Mars. So you can see, this is the corruption we have in the church today. And, uh, they keep on raising funds for their own pleasure. And of this, the latest challenge is actually T.D. Jakes. I think he will get into trouble very soon. I'm not condemning him, but because of who he associates himself with. Anybody knows this person by the name of Sion Didi? Rapper, right? He's a rapper. Yeah, he's a very famous rapper and he was recently arrested because he had a lot of parties in his home and uh, some of them are homosexuals. We have group sex, orgies and all that. And this man secretly taped these people and uh, blackmailed them. Okay? So uh, this guy is up to a lot of no good. And just like Epstein... He is arrested because uh, his girlfriend actually diverged what he does. Okay? And guess what? T.D. Jakes, very good friend of his. And I don't know whether he got tapes about T.D. Jakes or not. So if it has, there will be another preacher gone already. And we have just not too long ago, Carl Lenz of Hillsong. Uh, caught with committing adultery, using church fund to have fun, actually. So we have a lot of people doing a lot of wrong things today. The crack is beginning to appear in many, many places, including Singapore, including Australia, including Malaysia. Yeah. Now, this clergy-lady divide, which, which is a separation of the people from the leadership. That means you classify people who are trained to do the work and the people who are the passive that is listening in church, which is where most people come from. If you ask me, yes, I also come from that background, but now I know the truth. 
Now I know the truth, I rarely today preach in a normal church unless necessary I will go. But I will train the people or talk to people who at least have a chance to hear the truth. And this truth is missing from where a lot of people come from because they cannot speak about their own errors in leadership. Even though the form is wrong, they will not admit it or they don't even know that it is wrong. Can I have quickly yes or no? That's too long a pause because I've not muted anybody you quickly unmute yourself and then speak we want it to be interactive yeah yes okay this is what is happening amongst the churches the leadership doesn't understand the kind of leadership that god wants so today people are like sheep they just follow the leader they go and go and go where are they going to that is the question are they going to like this picture or this uh, slide? Listen, everybody, something is not right. Please turn back. And he says, shut up, idiot. Do as they say for the common good. Today, this is happening in American politics. Today, this is happening in the church. People are not led into the kingdom People are led into something that is not from God. Okay? And how many? I don't know. But there are some people that are doing the right thing, obviously. And the right thing to do is to train everybody for the work of the kingdom. So what we are talking about is leadership. Leadership is about people leading other people for God. In, in terms of Christian leadership, it is that, yeah? And uh, sometimes in the home, the wife may be the leader. It is not the man. But Christian leadership is truly based on men. The wife supports the man. That is the call of God, and it should be structured like this. And it is not about being a CEO of a company or like, you know, what is adopted in the church, senior pastor, and then they take the authority over everything. The authority is not shared. One man makes the decision for everybody else. Just like in a country, the leadership makes a decision for everybody else. And I recently heard that in Malaysia, the leadership is going to make some decision or already make some decision regarding the, uh, what do you call the vaccine? If there's a vaccine, they will force people to take the vaccine. They give the authority to the government to do that. Is that true? Can someone have confirmed with me? I just read in the news today. Are you not mute? unmute? Um, I haven't heard anything, Brother Reggie. I, also yeah. didn't hear I just received only that it is uh, passed by the government already before even the WHO, WHO, uh, asked for the pandemic treaty. Our government has given the authority to their people to make sure that everybody uh, obey. Okay, so check, fact check whether this is correct or not. Okay. So, in the world today, it is the political leaders that make the decision. And in the church, it is the pastor. Is it correct today it is like that? But God's form of leadership is very different from the world form of leadership or even today in the church. Leadership is needed everywhere, whether it is in the home, in the school, in a company, in sports, in a church, or the country. Leadership is important. You can either lead a, a country to war, or you can lead a country to peace and prosperity. That is where America is heading. Either they take a leader that leads them to war, 
or a leader that lead them to peace and prosperity. Yeah, this is what Douglas MacArthur says about leadership. A true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but become one of the equality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. So that is the definition of a good leader. This is not uh, from the scriptures, but it is from a man who used to be a great leader in the army. Let us read further. True leaders always practice the three R's. Respect for self. That means you have respect for your own self. Respect for others. Responsibility for all their actions. So you need to have respect for yourself, respect for other people, and responsible for what you do. Ronald Reagan says, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things but he is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. And I believe that what I'm trying to apply in this training is to get people to do the greatest things. If you can do the greatest things, it's no good. Because one day you will die. One day you are gone. So who is going to replace the vacuum? If you can replace one to one, you can say it's good. But we are not supposed to replace one to one. We are supposed to replace one to many. That is what this training is all about. It's not about one person that is going to do what I'm doing, but many of you will be doing what I'm doing. That is the vision. Warren Benny says, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. We can talk a lot until the cow jump over the moon. It doesn't matter until we do something about it. So when I was sharing about the kingdom move some 15 years ago, it was all talk. Today, the same very same person that does it, Philip Mark, teaching about the kingdom, he also talked a lot about it. But how many people is trained under kingdom move? Zero. It's still a theory. But at least we try to make this theory into a vision and into reality. That's why I'm talking to you right now. And Jesus said, For even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. This is the epitome of Jesus' kind of leadership. He said, even I, the Son of Man or the Son of God, came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. That means he's serving others and then willing to die for many. This is where we are missing it. This is not the central message of Christianity today. Today, Christianity is based on what God can do for you. All right, we ask God to bless us with good health, with prosperity, with a good home, with peace. Right? Most Christians' prayer are along this line. You agree? And we have an answer? Yes. All right. Now, I remember when I was young, during Chinese New Year, my mother took the joysticks, okay? All right. Uh, that was the eve of Chinese New Year where we put all the food to pray, you know. Then she went outside to our porch there and she lift up the, the joysticks. And I can hear silently she praying for peace, prosperity, you know, make money. Same. Christian, non-Christian, same. We ask the same thing. But Jesus say, I've come to serve. And then I come to die for many. So this is the characteristics of who our God is. 
But we want a, an easy way out. We want to have a good Christian life, uneventful. All right, we we have good children. We our children grow up to be good Christians, and then we grow old. All right, we die as a Christians. That's what all Christians look forward to. They never look forward to challenges. They don't want challenges. What do you think? Is that the true description of most Christians today? Yes. And when Brother Eddie started New Wine Scheme, well, I don't know what his mind is thinking, but he went to a lot of trouble. So is Upper Room. Daniel Gunn and Sister Teresa went through upheavals. Okay? Suddenly, that easy Christianity no longer exists. It becomes problem and problem. And I helped to start this, kickstart this, face also more problem because I got to deal with the problem that happened in all the other places. And even right now, there is problem. There are people who are supposed to come in are not in here tonight. Okay? There are many absentees from here. Maybe they know more than me already, don't need to be trained. I don't know. Whatever reasons, they are not here or they are angry with someone here. They're not coming in. So even right now, there is problem. But that is part of our faith. We will always have problem, but we are problem solvers. We need to solve the problem. We don't bury the problem under the carpet or bury it anywhere else, but we will deal with the issues of life. So tonight, let us focus not on that, but focus on Jesus. We are taking Jesus as the greatest leadership role model of all time. People get disappointed with church after church. I know people complain to me, I ah, yeah, go to this church, this problem, go to that church, this problem, all same, same. Have you heard that before? Well, that is the truth. You know why? Because the foundation is wrong. The foundation is not built on Jesus' role model. The foundation is built on a human role model in leadership. And the human role model in leadership is about the person that is in charge. Whether it's the politician, whether it is the pastor, whether it is the pope, it is the leader that is in charge. And it's based on his role model not the role model of Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay, tonight we are going to study into the role model that Jesus created for all of us. And I hope that this can cement uh, all that you need to understand about Jesus' form of leadership. Jesus led us like he led the ship. The sheep follow after Jesus. All right? It doesn't matter whether they're behind or in front, they follow after Jesus. And Jesus came to be a ransom for our lives. The reason is when He died for us, many of us, when we receive Christ, we are obligated, we are emotionally charged up to follow Jesus because of that. Now, if he wouldn't have done that, if he's in heaven and he said, follow after me, you think there will be many people following Jesus if he didn't come and die for your sins? The question is, if Jesus didn't come and die for your sins, would you still follow him like you follow now? No. You won't. Because why? Because you may not trust whether he truly is real or not, or you may not, what you call, have an emotional attachment to him. Whenever people think of the cross, people like D.L. Moody, he will jump out of bed to go and witness to someone because he promised Jesus 
He will never go to bed unless he speak to someone about Jesus Christ. And that night, he didn't. And he remembered it and he quickly took out his coat jacket out in the winter, went out to the streets to look for someone to talk to about Christ. And he met this taxi driver and he shared Christ with the man, directly hantam him, tell him that if he doesn't know Christ, he will die and go to hell or whatever it is. And the man actually got very angry with the El Moody. This was his testimony after that. If I do not recognize him as D.L. Moody, the preacher, I would have given him my fist in his face. But because it's D.L. Moody, I listen. And that man became one of the greatest evangelists in America. Okay? Because based on one principle, that if I do not speak to someone before I go to bed, it is something wrong. He has to do it. It's a commitment to him. So, because why? People are emotionally attached to Jesus because of what he did. When you think about the 39 stripes, when you think about the cross, and we think about a God hanging there for us, there is an emotional attachment. That's why it's important. And then, because of that, we can follow him. Today, many churches have a lack of this attachment. So, they have a religion, but they don't have a relationship that takes them to the next level. So I hope you are not in a religion here. You have a relationship with God to take this to the next level. Then Jesus said, can one of you read this? He who is greatest among you shall be a servant. That is the new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great because and everybody can serve Martin Luther King Jr. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, He who is greatest among you shall be a servant. This was when the disciples was quarreling among themselves. Which one of them? Oh yeah. Saita. Great. Holy out. They were discussing among themselves and then Jesus suddenly came into the conversation. Let you who is greatest be a servant to all. And everybody keep quiet. Wow, oh, like that, uh, like that. I don't want no. I don't want to be greatest. Uh. See, human beings. You ask them to serve, they don't want. Servant, uh, slave. Uh, tamang, uh. So Jesus redefined leadership. Now, did Jesus say it or did Jesus do it by example? Jesus do it by example. Jesus did it by example. Okay? Now, if we want to follow Jesus, do you agree with me that we all need to do it by examples? Yes. So the day you define me as a leader on top of you and not on par with you, all right, to teach you as much as possible to become, to know what I know, then... I would have been like the rest of them. If my attempt is not to make everybody able, capable, then I'm just like another leader. But Jesus' form of leadership is to equip everybody to be like himself. And that word is called duplication. You know when you duplicate something? How great would it be if we have a machine that can print money? That's duplication. Because each piece you duplicate, it's worth that amount of value. So what Jesus did with the 12 disciples was duplication. He duplicated himself to these 12 disciples. Today, the church is full of churchgoers. These people are not duplicated with the characteristics of Christ. Rather, they have a religion according to the church they attend to. If the church is focused in mission, the people are focused in mission. If the people are focused in prosperity, everybody is focused in prosperity. So it depends on what is given out from the pulpit. Am I right to say that? Yes. 
So we want the real deal. We want a balanced perspective. And Jesus not just talked about his kind of leadership. He declared to us that he has come to serve and to demonstrate his serving. He washed the feet of the disciples. Can someone read it? So when he had washed their feet and taken his garment and re reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? John 13, 12. My brother and sisters, I'm adopting the same method of teaching. If this is in traditionally a church or a seminar you attend, there will be no question asked. They'll teach you about what Jesus did. That's all. But Jesus asked, Do you know what I've done to you? So in the same manner, do you know why I'm teaching you about this form of leadership? Am I duplicate? Has Jesus duplicated himself to me? Can I have an answer? Yes. I'm asking you the same question. Do you know what Jesus is trying to say to you? John 13, 13 to 14, 15, 16, 17. All right. Can we have one of you read it? Dorothy, you call me Master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye you, if you do them. John 13 verses 13 to 17. So here Jesus is explaining to the disciples that now, if I am Lord and your master, I wash your feet. You should wash each other's feet. He didn't say you wash the feet of Jesus. He said wash one another's feet. That means do it to one another. He said, I give you this as an example. That's why he did it to give an example to us. How truly amazing it is this, the humility of this God. Yeah, Jesus. And he said, the servant is not greater than his Lord. That means he's telling you, you are not greater than Jesus. Okay? And neither that he is sent greater than he that sent him. That means he is not greater than the Father. He humbled himself before the Father. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Can we wash each other's feet? Can we submit to one another? Even as I share with you today in the kingdom move, there are people who are not submitted to one another. And they haven't deal with that because they refuse to submit to one another. Did I add or did, did, did I subtract? Is that what Jesus requires from all of us? Hello? Yes. When I do something wrong, let's say I'm being the leader of this group, I must apologize if I do something wrong. And there are many times over the course of my relationship with some of you, I apologize to you. All right? Because basically that is submitting to one another. We do something wrong, we, we, we submit to one another, we say sorry. It is... It, it, it is important, all right, so that we we can talk to each other no matter what happened. Anything that goes wrong, we can still talk about it. That is true, brothers and sisters in Christ. We can forgive one another and we can heal. That's why this takes a process that we need to learn. And God 
teaches us by of leadership through very simple illustration. In Job 12, 7, 10, he says, But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all this does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. So here in Job, God is telling you us, the animal knows about what I'm talking about. Okay? In terms of leadership, God used the animal to teach us. And tonight, I'm going to use that. I've taught it in the kingdom move. Uh, I mean, I talk it in the blueprint of the kingdom, but this beautiful message that I have will work deep into all of us. Well, God sometimes uses very simple things to teach us. And often, he talks about the foxes that eat the vine. Remember in the book of Songs of Solomon, the foxes that eat the vine? All right? Jesus talked about the deer. Jesus talked about the lamb. Jesus talked about the lion, the lion of Judah. God used simple things to help us understand. When he talked about humility, submission, he speaks about the lamb. When he talked about authority, his authority, he talks about the lion of Judah. So you can see that Jesus used simple illustration. And tonight, we're going to use the geese to help us understand something about leadership and tonight i want to say to you that we have to observe the correct form of leadership in order not to have the wrong foundation that you saw has happened in many high-rise buildings and also in many mega churches the problem is a weak foundation and this has got to do with how we think about leadership so we learn a lesson from the geese. I'm sure in Malaysia, you don't see the geese flying. In the United Kingdom, you see them fly in the sky. And sometimes you hear them make the noise because they are migrating to another place. And uh, this idea actually came in the Western world because the geese often fly in America, in Europe, and in England. They fly from place to place as the weather change. Yeah? You can see these birds in a V formation. Can you see that? Yes. Some people never think about it. Why the bird fly like this? And some people take the time to observe the birds and learn. And today with modern technology, where they can fly close to the geese in the air, and they can hear even the wings flapping, and they can hear even the breath of the geese, they have learned something important. Why they fly in this V formation? So, for the animal, it is they call instinct. For God, God has created this creature for them to survive. In order for them to fly long distance, they need to fly in a particular manner. Because if they just simply fly, simply fly, they cannot reach the destination. They need to fly in the correct way. So how do they fly? As each blood bird flaps its wing, it creates uplift for the bird following. There's a science involved. As they flap the wings, all right, it creates a uplift for the bird following behind. All right, we don't see this, we don't feel it, but it is science that the birds flying behind it helps them to fly much easier. So the leadership is important because it helps other people to fly with him. 
In a V formation, the whole flock adds at least 71% more flying range than if each bird flew alone. That means if they fly together in a V formation, it is just like an aeroplane ticking off in the air, all right? And it is have the necessary aerodynamics to drive the birds to use less energy as they fly on high altitude. Now, what does this teach us? What does this tell us? We must ask the question, why is it that this V formation is important and why that it can help all of them? It tells us there is power in unity. Okay? When you are united, when you do things together, you have power, right? Is it demonstrated in the three kingdom move today that power? Can we have and some answer here? As I go to the toilet, you can answer. I can hear you, yeah? Please. I think we help each other out, right? Brother Eddie is coming into uh, helping us with the worship. And we also um, go into the wine skin there, you know, to support uh, with the Bible reading. I think we have, uh, you know, uh, in between us, that it's built up our relationship together. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you, Sister Teresa. We support each other. And also uh, among our people, the core team, we also share responsibility. La. So uh, there's unity, you know, uh, in uh, worship myself with Clyde and also Sister Pauline all coming in to share, you know, and my brother Michael. That's why we, uh, we are able to function in unity la, because we we work as a team then when you work as a team there's unity la. so so uh yeah it's practice in our kingdom move la, that's for sure yeah uh i can see eddie helping out with uh, sister teresa and sister teresa helping out eddie michael come and speak quite often with uh new white skin all right we can see this interaction but is it helpful to us? It is, isn't it? And the, the beautiful thing is that they are not just doing that, they are supporting one another's ministry. And they talk about supporting each other's ministry. They do not compete with each other, but they support each other. Can you have an agreement on that? Yes. We didn't compete. We help one another. So this... Birds flapping together in a V formation speaks about unity in the spirit, unity in our resources. Unity brings us the power. Today, is the church functioning like that? No. But it is not difficult to understand, right? I'm just using a very simple illustration and I want us to move together. And even sometimes when I'm ministering the word, we have Eddie appearing and say, hey, Reggie, can I help strongly? Now, this is helping one another, supporting one another's work. And I appreciate that it is important that we help one another. And we have brother John Antonios very often come into my help as well as rangers in the meeting. And we have Stella, Sister Stella are also helping. And we hope more and more people can help in small ways. We cannot do it in big ways. Some of us are still tied to a job, but we can help one another in small ways. That's what the kingdom move is all about. And I can remember, you know, one of the group that set up then left. All right, you know what I'm talking about. Can you tell me the reason why the person cannot continue? Okay. 
Can you tell me the reason why he cannot continue with the kingdom move? There are few reasons. Because he hasn't caught the concept of kingdom move. He didn't caught the concept of kingdom move. The self is important because his ministry is more important than the kingdom move. He got no time, and uh, you know he cannot work with other people. You can see you fall out as far as if you cannot submit to one another, you cannot move with it. You will fade out by yourself because you cannot submit to one another. You agree? Yes. If you can, you will continue to be here. Now let's understand the next thing. Whenever a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and resistance of trying to fly alone. Whenever you go on your own, the enemy comes in already. The enemy attack you because you are alone. You got no brothers to pray for you. You are not in alignment with the rest of the people. You fall out and you will struggle on your own to fly. And you cannot reach your destination. As far as this geese is flying is concerned, they cannot reach its destination if they fly alone. So whatever the reason, you must never leave. That's why a sister that came into my meeting, she did not understand, even though she attended a Kingdom Move Church, she did not understand what I'm trying to say here. I say once you come in, you cannot get out. And she suddenly, wow, you like cow like that, huh? come in and you cannot get out. One, huh? But she doesn't understand. Now I'm going to just throw a simple question at all of you. If this you truly believe is a kingdom move that is not run by men, but set up by God, set up by God, not Regis, not Eddie's, not Michael, not uh, Daniel Gunn or Sister Teresa's work, but it's set up by God. You agree you cannot leave? Can we come to agreement on that? Yes. yes. You cannot leave because unless the man factor come in, that means I say, hey, you follow me, huh? You better listen to me. Uh. You have to follow exactly what I do, what I tell you you have to follow. Uh. You follow me. Uh. If I start to do that, then you can leave. But as long as I bring the word of God and feed you with the word of God, share the word of God with you, train you with all my heart, all that I have, I'm passing to you. I do that. You leave. You live on your own at God. You are leaving God. You're not leaving me. That's why I tried to make the sister understand. She did not understand. So she, because of that, she don't want to be part of what we are doing. Very sad. Because there's a misunderstanding into the concept of the kingdom. Once you enter the kingdom, do you want to leave? Hello? No. You will never want to leave because why? You are moving towards the kingdom. Unless you have somebody doing this better than what I'm doing and you think that is the best to go to, by all means, leave. But if you've got nowhere else to find this, my brother and sister, you better stay. It means that. Okay? So don't be a lone ranger. You cannot survive because the enemy will come for you. Yeah? We all must have a support group. My brother and sisters, the tea house, the new wine scheme, the volume bit, huh? upper room is a support group. We all support one another. And I really admire some of the people in the morning devotion because not too long ago, there were a lot of trouble there but the people 
didn't run away except one or two, you know, which are not matured enough. They stay on. They stay on to be a support group for Sister Teresa and a support group for one another. And that's important. Do you agree or not? Yes, yes, totally. So totally. I'm speaking to people from the tea house as well as the new wine scheme. All right, the core, core group is very small. All right, you can name the, the people in the core group. Please, please understand this, that Eddie cannot do it alone. He needs your support. Sister Teresa needs the support. And so does Brother Michael. And so does Brother Reggie Lee. I need your support. Because I have a lot of food in my plate. I have a lot of food to finish my brothers and sisters. So your support can help me a long way. So let's go to the next definition about learning from the geese. We are people who share a common direction, a sense of community, can get where can get where they are going quicker and easier than those who try to do it alone. Try doing it alone and see, see how far you can go. Let's say I leave. Let's say Sister Teresa not going to help Eddie, Michael not going to help. Would you lose? something important to what you are doing, Brother Eddie? Brother Eddie, are you there? Uh, sorry, I went to the toilet. <laughs> okay, what's the question? Sorry. Oh, you went to the toilet. No wonder, <laughs> like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's the question? I was sharing that if, let's say, you do it alone, Let's say other people do it alone, doesn't support you. Sister <laughs> Tresta don't support you. Michael don't support you. All right. Then you, uh, your community member, your, your core group leave. Can you do it? No way. Yeah. <laughs> There's it's no a, way. The kingdom move is about submitting to one another, helping one another. So you cannot be a lone ranger. Okay. So neither can I be a lone ranger. I need your support. For me to move, I need your support. Okay? So let's not kill each other. Let's not compete with each other. Let us, like these geese, fly together in a V formation. Okay? So I hope we can capture this very importantly. But the next one is important because we need to understand the dynamics of leadership. Number four, it is better to have rotation in leadership. Okay? When a goose gets tired, it rotates back into the formation and another goose flies at the point position. If people had as much sense as geese, they would realize that ultimately their success depends on working as a team, taking turns doing the hard task and sharing leadership. You cannot you know, Hokkien, Penang Hokkien, Pao Ka Liao. Semua, you sendiri, uh, one leg kick all. Huh? A very common Cantonese derivative, all right? Uh, Eddie can tell you. Echi Kyo, Tak Ka Liao, huh? You cannot. Because leadership can get burned out. Like me. I'm doing many things. I need to pass on some things to people. That's why I told Eddie, Eddie, you must do the poster. Eddie said, cannot, uh, you know, I, uh, a lot of noise, you know. But Eddie is the kind of man I really respect him. He may make noise, but he will try to do it. He did it. And today, wow, she made good, very good flyers. And so is Sister Teresa. She makes good flyer. They don't need me to do that. If not every week, I've got to do flyers for upper room. i got to do flyers for new wine scheme. And it takes time and I make a lot of mistakes because of limited time. Today, these people can do the job. And I believe that this can pass on to the next generation of people in the kingdom move. So we need some time to rotate the leadership 
when the time comes. Initially, we cannot because that's all you have. Eventually, we need that. Especially right now in this kingdom teaching, I will be calling upon Brother Michael to lead the teaching for a season because I'm facing problem right now. I have a grandson here, very sadly to tell you that he is autistic. We take care of him two days, two nights in a week. Now it becomes three nights. Not just that, we have got to take him to London to meet a therapist to try to help him to function better. And we are spending a lot of time and money with him. And it costs 20,000 pounds for half a year. That's a lot of money. Most people cannot make 20,000 pounds in a year or half a year. But it needs 20,000 pounds and I need to follow up on him. That's why my teaching become irregular because of this. And wherever I find time, last minute, I organize meetings, I do it. I know Choi has got to do that now because of my grandson. So I think it's time for somebody who is good to be able to take this rotation in leadership. Can you see the practical application of this? All right. When the person is ready, then we will have a rotation in the leadership because not one person do it all. We don't want to depend on one single person to move. We have to move together. Amen? Can we agree on that? Amen. All right. Now, this is number one to avoid burnout. Hey, I'm only human. <laughs> I can burn out, you know. When you do too much things, uh, then you become dysfunctional already. So before you get burnout, out, you prepare it. So I now preparing it not to get a burn out because I will get a burn out if I don't prepare it. Yeah. Now we all face temptation. Enemy tempt us. We know the three most common things the enemy tempt us with. Can you name the three things that they tempt us who are serving God? What are the things that the enemy tempt us with? The uh, 3G. Go, girls, glory. Yeah. 3G. 3 major one, right? And if we are not careful, we easily fall. But we have less temptation in our structure. You agree? We have less temptation with our structure. Do you know why? Do you know why we have less temptation in our structure as compared to the to the institution? Our resources are all transparent weekly. Very good. Because we doesn't deal with the money directly, we don't hoard the money, we don't put FD 15 million, 10,000 or 20,000. Eddie just received a large sum of money. He wants to give it away to the needs out there. That's the right way. And if you keep the money, you agree, you'll be tempted to use it for yourself. 
That's exactly what happened in many mega churches. They have so much money, then the pastor said, I should fly business class to see my wife every month in US because I am the CEO pastor. Okay? Or I need this private jet. This one old already. I need to buy a 650 golf string. See? Serious temptation comes to you when you are not submitted to one another. See? When you are submitted to one another, I say, hey, I want to buy a private jet to fly home to Malaysia as and when I need. Then Eddie will tell me, hey, Reggie, you teach us about crafty dollar. Now also you want to buy private jet. Ah. See? There is counsel in the multitudes of many. Okay? Can you see that? We are less tempted to do wrong things. Except the woman part. The woman part is if you are privately with a person ministering, that's the problem. That's the red herring. As long as you're not privately with anybody, the chances of you committing this offense is minor. You agree? So we must learn to avoid temptation. Okay. Next thing that we, I want you to want all of us to learn is geese in the rear of the formation home to encourage those up front to up their speed. It is important that our honking from behind be encouraging. Otherwise, it's just, well, honking. Now, people who are behind the leadership, in many instances, they speak ill, ill about the person in front. Okay? They condemn, ah, yeah, this fellow do this thing wrong, I cannot do it done like that one, they shouldn't do like that. Instead of telling the person who is in the leadership, I think this one you do wrong, you should do this, you tell to other people in the line behind. That is bringing down the person. The person behind is supposed to encourage. Okay? Now, if anything is wrong, you tell the person in front, hey, I think this should be done like that. Then the correction can come. All right? So, it's important to understand that we are behind, you are not in the front line, you do not understand the person in front, what is it going through. Do you know what I'm going through? You don't know. In the midst of what I'm doing, do you know, do you know of the challenges I face? Trying to correct a lot of things out there for the Christian community. So many errors, all right? Trying to teach every Thursday, trying to teach to the kingdom citizen every Tuesday, and then my grandchildren problem, okay? And then my own personal needs is heavy, heavy load, all right? But am I complaining? No. I'm just telling that, be understanding that if you're at the back, you don't know what is happening in front of you, what people are going through, what Eddie is going through, what Michael is going through, or what Sister Teresa is going through. We need to support one another. Let us not bring down one another, but support. So this is the point that you need to learn. This video is available to everyone by tomorrow. Nowadays, I can do very fast already because someone has blessed me with a new, new computer. I can do it in my room or outside the room. I'm more productive right now. That's why you can see a lot of new videos that I edited and sent out, right? Do you receive my video, latest videos? Yes. And I'm going to work backwards the latest I edit first, then I slowly move backwards to the one that is uh, uh, in the teaching series. I'm going to, going to look at it and then to edit it and then put it out for everybody because it can help a lot of people. Yeah. Now here is another understanding from this geese. 
When a goose gets sick or wounded, two other geese drop out of the formation and follow it down to help and provide protection. They stay with the unhealthy members of the flock until it either is either able to fly again or dies. That means when one of us is injured or hurt, some of us need to attend to the problem. We need to. Like if I voice out to you, hey, brother and sisters, I've got a financial need. You need to attend to it. You will never hear me cry out for money. Man. Okay? So unless I'm desperate, then I cry out for money. Only one or twice in a blue moon when I cannot meet really, then I ask for help. But for the rest of the time, I trust God. So is the needs of our members. Eddie, are you helping, still helping Philip Mark and Sister Vincy? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yes. Yeah, we're helping him. And then like even uh, Upper Room, we need to continue to help Philip Mark and Vincy because they are flying with us and then they get sick. We need to help them until they recover. There will be a day that we don't need to help them anymore. Do you know that do you know that one of the people who who comes to my meeting help Philip Mark every month one thousand ringgit? Two years already. How I know? Because she doesn't send she sent the money to Eddie, but the information come to me. Eddie, uh, uh, to Philip Mark, but Philip Mark doesn't know who gave. Only I know. She's anonymous to Philip Mark. Continue to give. That is what the kingdom move is all about. So that we help one another, submit to one another. Yeah? So, I'm sure we don't want to be in a situation where we need help from people. We want to help other people. Okay? We want to help other people because if we can help other people, that means we are healthy financially, spiritually, or health-wise. So always stop to help others. You are not in a race to finish first, but we finish together. So we want to finish this together. So we want to continue this culture of helping and supporting one another. Then they launch out again with another passing flock or try to catch up with their own. May we be so sacrificial that we may be worthy of such a friend in our need, a time of need. Now, let's talk about Philip Mark again. One day he approached me for help. Financially. How much do you think I can help him? Very limited, right? So, but I have a very good, sizable chat the people who come to my meeting. And I just told Philip, I said, look here, produce a video telling us about your problem, your health problem and your needs. Then I will add in what I need to tell the people about you. So he did that and I, and I put in some words and I sent the video clip. You know, that little effort that I did has brought in a lot of money. Can you believe more than 100,000? It's a wow, right? And that can help our brother go through his crisis. Okay? I'm thankful, you know, sometimes like 
I don't mind to tell uh, like Sister Teresa, I never tell how much to give me if I speak. And even nobody give me anything also is fine. We all voluntarily serve God. But most of the our group here, we acknowledge the speaker and we are offered, you know, a, a sum of money for the speaker. Okay? And quite a number of times that I was surprised from upper room that they gave me more than is required to give to the speaker. Okay? And this encourages the man of God. You know, that God really knows best. And more towards the encouragement than the money that I'm encouraged by it. I didn't ask for it and it was done out of love. So we thank God for that. Now, this is not to say that other people didn't do this or that. I'm just giving uh, an example, that's all, that we can help one another. And some of you know that I, in many instances, do the same like what Sister Teresa did as well. And some of the people don't even know it, you know, because we don't let the left hand know what the right hand gives, yeah? Number seven, to learn this. If you miss the train, there is always a next station or next train. Don't give up. The devil waits for you to give up. Sometimes we can fall into trouble. Sometimes through our own issues, sometimes unforeseen circumstances, sometimes through our ignorance. It could be from any angle. We may do the wrong thing. There is always a time to come back. I say, you know, the train stop at every station. After the train leaves, the next train will come and then it will stop at the station. Well, like the train ride, don't give up. Go to the next station and go on board. The moment you don't get on board, you are on your own. And that's very dangerous. You agree? Yes. So I want you to be close to one another. Help one another. Encourage one another. Build one another up. And that way, we will all be blessed. Yeah. So the takeaway for all of us here is, Number one, remember that we need to be, have unity because in unity, then the power will come. Just give you an illustration. Can we, if we can set up five, just 500 kingdom move throughout the country and do the same thing, do you think it is powerful? Yes, powerful. It will be very powerful because small groups of people can do great things for God, not big groups of people. The amount of money being raised in New Wine Skin and Upper Room is a lot over the last three to two to three years. All right. And I think Eddie is surprised himself and often surprised by God with what God can do without you, you know, trying to put... Sometimes he does moan that, ah, you know, this week people give only 100, no money come in and all that. All right. I can hear, I can hear the, the heart when Eddie speaks about that. But in my mind, I'm saying, wait till you see, wait till you hear God. And even in... Upper room as well. So many miracles has happened. Am I right to say that or not? Financial breakthrough that God has given to both this group. Can we have an affirmation? Yes. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But the attitude is the more we receive, the more we give away. Don't keep. Amen. You keep the flow stops. That's the principle of God. Even as you enjoy this 
financial breakthrough. Now, recently, I did a lot of meetings where people come in, as usual, they don't sow. They don't sow. Hundreds of people come in. When you see the amount of money sold, is very little. And God is always full of surprises. He's no man debtors. You don't sow, I get other people to sow. And I receive a lot from people you don't expect to sow like that. So that's who God is. He knows the need. He knows what you can do. Uh, Stephen, can you please mute yourself? I just want to tell you something about your, your what you call your, your phone or what. Whenever you open, uh, it makes a very distortive sound. Since you come into the meeting, it's been like that. Something is wrong with your phone or I don't know what is wrong. Uh, can can the rest of you hear it and tell Brother Stephen what you hear? Like a sharp sound like that like every time. Yeah, every there's always time. a distortion. That's why whenever you open your microphone, we ask you to switch off. So you better deal with that issue because you go to other people's meeting, also same problem. Okay? So we want to have a very clear sound with all of us. If you the phone, your problem, buy a new phone. Okay? No problem with that. Now phones are so cheap, you know. Number two, we need to have a support group. Okay? You, wherever you are, is a support group to one another. I like it especially with the morning devotion. And I want to make it a point to come back once in a while. Because I've got too much in my plate, I, I will lack of sleep if I come in because of the... the unusual hour that's midnight very hard for me so i would suggest eddie to come also in once in a while to support the the morning devotion because it is really good to spend the early hours of our morning with god we should come in including myself for here it's not morning it's midnight and i think it would be good to do that you know we need to support one another in all our areas so whatever you go through, please, please don't be a lone ranger. You got problem, confide in your brothers and sisters. Sometimes a woman like Teresa may not confide in a person like me. Sometimes it is need a woman to woman. So please confide in Stella, Annie, the rest of the people whom you are close with. We cannot be a lone ranger. And sometimes Eddie confide with me the things he's going through. I confide with him and I confide with uh, another person not here, Joel. I wish he could be part of this kingdom move. I don't know why he doesn't want to be in. And he's somebody who is very helpful to me as well. When I do things, I confide in him and he confide in me. And so I confide with Eddie, Eddie confide in me. With me. Uh, Joel okay? is in the meeting now. <laughs> Joel is in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good, Brother Joel. Good to see you here because at least I don't know he's in a meeting. I'm telling the truth. I didn't say bad things about him. I say good things. <laughs> so I confide in him. He confide in me. So that's how it works. We are not lone ranger. We cannot do it alone. Number four, it, it is better to have rotation in leadership. There will come a point of time, I say, take all the rain for a season. Because we may become stale in the leadership, just like the, the, the formation of the geese. When the geese right in front is tired, it will, it will fly downwards to the end, and then the next one takes over. All right? So the, the, the leadership can be refreshed, and also that it won't be stale. So we need to understand that because this is the long haul. We are not flying to heaven. We are flying into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. This flight is to take you to the kingdom of God. I, we are not interested to go to heaven. We are interested in the kingdom. All right? So whether you get there or not, at least you have a direction you're trying to get there. 
I can't tell you whether I'll be there amongst the greatest of the men of God. I don't know. All right? If I count, I'm in one of them. I'm eternally grateful to be there. All right? So I hope it's your attitude here that you feel like you have not done enough, then you continue to do more. If you feel you have done enough, you know the kingdom move, that's it. Yeah, what chai ga leo, eh hiao leo, men cho leo. You're finished. You still get to heaven, but you will not be in the kingdom move. This is reserved for doers, not talkers. Amen? So remember, number five is we need to encourage people in the front because we never understand the challenges they face. Okay, the challenges they face out there in the front. So pray for them, encourage them, build them up. Don't bring them down. Number six that I want to speak to all of us is always stop to help others. You're not in a race to finish first, but finish together. Now I got involved myself in reading between the lines. All right, because I find too many Christians are so clueless about everything, about scriptures, about the book of Revelation, about what's going on in America. They're clueless. So I spend a lot of time to educate Christians about, you know, how to understand things. All right. And even that, I still receive messages with people who are asking me very basic things that for them to understand, they still cannot understand. Okay? So I've got to deal with that. The last one is, we may do something wrong or circumstances may hit us. There may be a lot of things that cloud our mind. But remember, remember, get back to this trade. This train takes us to the kingdom. It doesn't take you to heaven. It takes you to the kingdom. If you get to the kingdom, heaven is guaranteed. Okay? So this is one-way journey there. That's all. So if you have any problem in the kingdom move, try to resolve it. Be back into it. So I myself doesn't hold any malice to all of you. I'm not against anybody. I'm for everybody. Just as Jesus is for everybody God brought to him. All right? I'm for everybody to help everybody to finish well. That's it. So there any any other reason for you to live unless I'm teaching you errors. I'm leading you out of the kingdom. Because if you tell me, Reggie, I found another movement that can take me to the kingdom much better than what you're doing. By all means, go. Because your allegiance is not to me. Your allegiance is to God. So if God do any great things with other people, by all means, you can go. If not, stay. So, it is the kind of leadership that Jesus wants all of us to have. It is very controversial to the world. It is difficult for Christians, but yet it is possible. And this impossibility that started with crossing the Red Sea to the wilderness, crossing the River Jordan into the Promised Land, and to the gospel spread to every nation in the world, come to us, that this move in Jerusalem from 12 men who followed Jesus became a possibility. And we are that possibility. And we want to be that possibility for the kingdom that is to come. You must believe that the kingdom is coming. You are setting it up. Right now, when Jesus returned, he will have a ready group of people waiting for him to fill in the position. This is what we are doing to help fill the position of the priests in the kingdom. Amen?
Now look at the difference between the present day church leadership. It's all about control everybody. Politics, same. Control what is in the bottom. Jesus is not about control. It's about empowerment. Empower you to do the job. Right? Did Jesus empower us to do the job? He tell you, go. He said, go. Therefore, make disciples like I've made disciples to the twelve. Okay? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them the commandments of God. Didn't Jesus came and did this? Can we have an answer? Can we have an answer? Take very long time. Uh, I don't know why. Unmute yourself and answer. Yes. Okay, very good. Now, Jesus discipled the 12. He empowered the 12 to baptize everybody that is saved. And then he empowered them to teach, right? Are the 12 disciples more educated than you today? Can I have an answer, yes or no? No. No. What they have is Jesus' discipleship for three and, three, three and a half years. That's all. Jesus discipled them so that they can accomplish what God sets out to do set them out to do. So, likewise, if we know more than the 12 disciples, we now have Bible in our apps. What version you have, you want, you have it. You have strong concordance. You have everything in your phone, in YouTube. There are so many places you can learn. Why are we doing less? Tell you the problem. We are doing less because of something. Can you tell me what is lacking in most of us? One word, that's all. And you've got to align with that word. Can you tell me one word only that you need to have? Try, at least one of you, try, please. Faith. Faith, some more. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Love of Jesus. Love, love of for Jesus. Jesus. Love for Jesus, yeah. The answer is actually found in the book of Isaiah. Unto us a child is born, you know. Can someone open up that part of the scripture and read it and I tell you where you find it? No, no, no. It's actually found in uh, the book of Daniel. Okay, the word, the key word is actually the zeal of the Lord. And when God say he's going to build his kingdom, okay, underlying the last verse is say. The zeal of the Lord will do it. Now, the word zeal is something very deep that comes from you that wants to do it. Very, very deep you want to do it. Okay, the zeal of the Lord. Can we have somebody find out the, the word, what is the meaning of the word zeal? He said, great energy, enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. Okay? Great energy 
and enthusiasm. So, the kingdom can only be established if we start it. Remember Matthew 24 verse 14? He said the kingdom cannot come until the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the nations. But today is the gospel of the kingdom preached in all the nations? The answer is no. It's a gospel of salvation. So we need to have that. This is the old structure. Whether it's politics, whether it's church, you can see the hierarchy of leadership. Down below are the ordinary citizens. Ordinary citizens like you and me. And each level go up, you have a leadership. Okay? You can see all the leadership at the different level. The highest is the senior pastor, followed by the pastors, and then the, the board members, deacons, and all that. Then below are all of us. Okay? That's the old structure. The new structure is the leadership is at the bottom, empowering people above them. The words is support, facilitate, Helping, okay, this is what the new leadership does. The old one is top down, control, command, hierarchy, order, micromanagement. Okay, what is micromanagement? You know, those days when I was doing ministries, uh, they want to help me, but they want to tie me down that I cannot take from other people, they take from us, you have got to report to us. And if I were to do the report, I don't need to do the work with it. Why? This is called micromanagement. They cannot give money to you, let you do what God has called them to do. And I was very surprised that a person from the Methodist Church have given to me quite a number of times without asking me what I do with the money. Kuala Lumpur. Surprised because it's a Methodist Church and this lady once in a while will bring, hey, this is for you. From our church. Can you sign this, 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 this? I just sign. Send it back. That is what it's all about. Empowering people. Yeah. So as you can see, there are two kinds of leadership. Caesar's leadership, which is in politics and in the church as well, glorify the self. I do this. I did that. I'm how big is my church, you know, how successful my church is. This is yourself. Okay. Now I know of a church, of a church group in Australia. You are in the club of 500. If you've got any congregation less than 500, you cannot join the club. And they often meet in expensive places, Makan, Dying, all these, these big time pastors they meet. The rest, they know I to see. But we look at these small things like Pastor Barnabas, okay? We help Pastor Madagas, Philip Mark, you know? These are small things. We help the small people. Make the kingdom do what's best for me. So politics will make what their position do for them. They abuse it. And so there's sometimes the church. In the church, a lot of pastors have benefits after benefits. And they indulge in the privileged they have in the church, like car, all right, some of them drive Mercedes Benz, big cars, big allowances, okay, big recognition, make everyone serve them. So people serve them in politics, in church, you know. I've seen also in churches, black churches, where people carry the, the Bible of the pastor when he go up to the pulpit. Put it down, open up the Bible for them. And some even go to the extent of cleaning or wiping their sweat. They're wiping the sweat, sweat, you know. So some people, they make others die for them, especially politicians. Other people die for them. Okay. Now, in Christ's leadership, God won humility, humbleness in you. You do what is best for the kingdom. 
What can you do for the kingdom? Not what the kingdom can do for you. You give up your privilege for others. Even though you pastor, you say, no, I call me brother Reggie will do or sister, sister Pauline, you know. That's the attitude. Give up my privilege for others. Something is for me, we give it to other people. Serve everyone else. So serve other people. Die for everyone else. Not die for yourself. So that's the difference, my brother and sisters. Is it difficult? Yes, it is. If your heart is not sold out for God. If your heart is sold out for God, then it is easy. So if Jesus can do that and he's the master, certainly we all can do it. Now, in closing, I'm going to introduce you to three, three great men of God, what they did and what I think about them, I'm sharing with you. That means not all the institutional church, all the pastors no good. They are good, they are bad, they are average. They are all kinds of people in the church. We know them. They are very generous. They are very kind pastors and they are very greedy. They are very snobbish. It makes out all kinds of people. But let me tell you of this man, Daniel Ho. Daniel Ho, I don't know him personally, but I've seen his action without him showing me. Because I used to go to DUMC to be involved in my Who Are the Chinese ministry. And I talked to this man. I remember I joined one of his meetings when he speak to the people. I was introduced to him. In the pulpit, he mentioned me, Reggie Lee. Okay? He doesn't take me for granted. Reggie Lee, even though I met him for the first time, he mentioned my name. Okay? Humility. Number two, one of the time when I was in his church, they were announcing the pastor is back, just back from the mission trip to Philippines. Instead of going back to his home, rest, pastor, go for mission trip, you know, rest, he came straight to the office to do the work of the Lord. He didn't tell me he did that, but my observation. Third thing I was told by others, because DMC grew to a very big church, they wanted to buy him a Mercedes-Benz C-Class. He said, no. I don't want that. And then they offer him a Honda Accord. He also said no. He took a Toyota Altis. Third thing I'm going to tell you, he's not an old man. He's in his prime, full of energy, full of wisdom. But he chose to pass on the leadership. So he trained up one of the people he identified and slowly but surely he trained it up, all right, from speaking once a month to twice a month and eventually passed on the baton to the new guy. And he stepped down, become an ordinary person. How many want to do that? When you have built up a 5,000 strong church, you can enjoy all the benefits of a senior pastor. Why you become an unknown again? He did that. That is humility. That is servanthood. That is the exemplar of Christ. Amen? Can we hear some amen from you? Amen. 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 I am not promoting him. I'm telling you the truth about people. And this is not the kingdom move because we don't have kingdom move leadership to talk to you about. But I can take it from the uh, institutional church. Anybody know Isaac Yim? Anybody here knows him? I'm sure you don't know him. He used to be the pastor of the Baptist, the biggest Baptist church in Kuala Lumpur. Now, how did I know him? One day, he came for mission work in UK. And I rented a one-room flat in UK because then the first time I came, my family came. We got no... No place 
to stay, so one room flat, all the three in the family stay. And he came and asked me, hey, Reggie, uh, another friend that took him here said, can we squat in your flat uh, for two, three nights? Obviously, for me, if I can help another fellow worker in Christ, I will do that. And uh, the person that introduced to me is actually David Liu. Some of you know David Liu here. And today, he has come against me. Now, I don't want to talk about this story about he coming against me. He brought Isaac Yim to my flat. Now, it's a one-room flat. You know, in order for them to come and stay in my flat, I've got to sleep on the floor. I've given my bed to the both of them and they slept. Now, because of this act of kindness, they become close to me, including Pastor Isaac. And we communicate for quite a while until recently, I have not communicated with him. Now, I'll tell you his story. He became a Christian at a young age in Ipoh and a very brilliant and intelligent person. If he works in the corporate world, probably he will be a CEO, that kind of material. But at a young age of 15, he chose to follow the path of Jesus. And his father warned him, Hey, son, this job you do uh, is a heartache. No recognition, no reward. You want to join. My company is so big, you can easily become, you know, my director in the company, rich, rich family. Okay? And uh, his father said, you make this decision properly, you know, because once you make decision, this property, all I have will not go to you. It will go to your brothers. This man said yes to Jesus. Now, there is not anything as yet to say about him. He built up the Baptist church to be the biggest in Malaysia. Successful at the prime like David Ho. Well, enjoy the fruits of your labor. And this man take a step down to be an apostle for God. Not in title, but a true apostle going to small churches in Myanmar, in China, in Hong Kong, in Cambodia to help with zero money. And this is the man that asked the bait. Okay, you know why? Because it's expensive to stay in a hotel here. So they save a lot by the bait. And this man, after being so successful as a pastor, chose to step down to begin again. Can we learn something from the model that Christ created through this man of God? Can we be humble enough to step down when we are high up there? Can we be humble enough to be an ordinary person? So this is the second man under true form of servanthood leadership. Now I introduce you, there are four. I introduce you to the third man. Eddie knows him, Michael knows him, right? Eddie. Yeah. Yes. Now I'm going to talk to you about this man that many of you don't know. When my business failed, my church rejected me. Okay? My church didn't help me because how can we help? Everybody also have a need. Okay? So we help him because we help others so they cannot help. But this man by the name of Abraham Gan heard about me, my problem, and how God has called me. And first thing, how he helped me, I used to send food to his ministry called uh, Marketplace Ministry, the first one in Penang. So I went and supplied him lunch, 30 for 30 people, then I cooked for him. And he know my problem, and many of times I don't come back and collect the things after I cook for them, okay? Because it's like a buffet style. So I wait until they finish and collect. And then I get to know him and he one day told me this, hey, this one, you power already. Lah. That means uh, every week I don't order, you just cook and bring. We will take from you. This is to help me. 
And then later on, he tell me, hey, brother Reggie, you are called by God. You need to be commissioned. And this man on the 1st of January 2000, I think, commissioned me to be a man of God. He said, you must be set apart if you are called by God. So I'm going to commission you in a simple ceremony, Hillside Baptist Church. He did that. My own church don't do that. And then they they, they kind of uh, come against what Abraham Gunn did for me. They don't do it, but they against what Abraham, Abraham Gunn did for me. And that put me on a milestone. And he began to train me five minutes, speak in the pulpit. Uh, after that, 10 minutes, then a full service. Let me speak. And because of that, I begin to fellowship in his church. And I found some very interesting thing. There's an offering box there. Okay, he put a box there. And after service, he never collect tithes and offering. And sometimes he don't even tell them there's a box there. He put the money there. He don't do that. So I see this man truly a man of faith. He told me, I said, why, why pastor, you never ask for offering? He said, the day when there is not enough money to run this church, it is the day that God is giving me a signal that it's over. Okay? And listen, every amount of money he received in excess of the, the what they call the running of the church, pay up the whoever needs to be paid, the balance, he give it all to any form of ministry that he seemed deemed fit, he give it all away, leave nothing behind. Every month he start fresh. That was not told by him, but told by the person who runs the account. I got shocked. How can you run a church like that? Wow, this man really have faith and trust in God. And if there's any man, any pastor doing a kingdom move without understanding the kingdom move, this is the man. He was the one who nurtured me, all right, to train me up to be able a man to minister to other people. He encouraged me. He didn't condemn me, all right. He softly, you know, teach me, correct the things that I do wrong, and I grew from there. I'm always indebted to this man. That is a man of great servanthood unto the Lord. What do you think, Brother Eddie? Yeah, <laughs> he also did the same thing to me. <laughs> in fact, this Sunday we are doing worship. Uh, myself and Brother Clyde is doing worship in his church. Uh, very supportive, uh, always uh, encouraging uh, people, even me, myself. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> that is true discipleship. Amen. The last guy I'm going to talk to you is Pastor Barnabas of Crystal Family Home and uh, the Revival Church in Penang. I know this man for a long time when I was helping out in their ministry uh, feeding program in, in uh, Aitam, what they call Reservoir Baptist Church. I knew him because he was involved in some of the uh, uh, food bank, you know. And let me tell you about this man. He was a drug addict before. And he was a terrible person, okay? Many of us are terrible person, you know, before we know God. And God turned him to an angel. And not just turn him an angel, God actually duplicated himself in this man. Now, the greatest admiration I have for him is just this. Not the work he do in Crystal Home, but the work he did in one man. And I've seen and met this man. He picked up a man from the rubbish dump, left skeleton, skeleton and bones with all the matted hair, and uh, he was delusion, like mad like that. He picked up this man, carried home, go to the toilet, bathe him, and that man pee and poo on his bed. Okay? Remember, this is a flat with his family, you know. He brought it home, brought the guy home, clean him up, crop his hair, you know, feed him until the man, uh, what he call recover. And actually, the man is a 
degree holder, has a successful job, but the wife left him, he gone bonkers, he drink until, you know, he's go crazy. And Pastor Barnabas rescued this man from the dumps. How many of you can take someone like that into your home? Not helping him outside, bring him to your home. This is the man. My respect is based on this. Why would he do that? Why do it bring so much problem to himself and his own family for the sake of one man? And not just that, when the man recovered, the man actually didn't show gratitude. And the man did something that is very unbecoming of someone who is rescued by another man. I don't want to mention more than that. That is the kind of man we call servanthood. When I go to his church to preach, small church, Indian people, how much they give? Two ringgit, ten ringgit, five ringgit. You can say go to that kind of church, no need for them to give me love offering. Now. <laughs> this is a place of need. But this pastor give more than the big church. When I go and speak in his church, sometimes I get a shock of what he did for me. Not because he gave me money, but he's a man with a big heart for other people. So if you sow into this man, you're sowing on good grounds. So I'm finished tonight. I just want to end by telling you that it's so important to be taught correctly. And I give you the best of examples that I think of. And these are not men frying private jet or having a big ministry, but men and women who are, I would say, deserve this mention that I give to you because very high standard. So my brothers and sisters, this is the kind of standard you must look for in yourself. I look for this type of standard, all right, to myself. And you should too, serving one another without much Funfair, yeah? So I hope tonight this understanding of Christ's form of leadership sink deep into your heart so that it can blossom into a garden of service to the Lord. Your heart must be planting the fruits of these uh, values that I've given to you. You must plant them in your hearts. Then it will grow and bless everybody. Amen. So I leave it to a time for Q&A, then we can leave because it's quite late also already. Uh, any input Brother, from you or comments? Yeah, Dorothy, yes? Yeah. Ask yourself, don't be in a black, what they call, a block. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, so uh, it, it's very helpful. And uh, uh, I once went to Penang to the Reservoir Garden Church also. The the, the one uh, near the Penang Hill Railway. Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah, correct. Was, yeah, uh, that's the church. Uh, that, I went there many years ago before I was a Christian. <laughs> My sister brought me there. Stephen, can you mute yourself? Thank you very much for, for teaching us, for revealing to us all these things. And um, uh, I am a person, I, I don't I want to boast about myself, but God also teaches me humility. And whatever we learn in the upper room morning devotion, I try with the help of the Holy Spirit to do it and even apologize to people who have wronged me so, so that there is, like you say, unity at the place. So I actually, I'm, I'm very blessed uh, to be in the upper room. So thank you very much, uh, Brother Raji, for teaching us all these uh, 
different aspect of being a, a, a good follower of Jesus Christ and to be a servant of the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, next person. Mm. Yeah, Raji, can I say something? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. <laughs> Just now you say you cannot understand why I am not in kingdom work. Eh? As you mm. know, uh, mm. you did uh, offer to me to start the kingdom work in Malacca. Okay. Mm. I say not now, mm. okay, because I also subscribe to the kingdom of God uh, concept, yeah, and I am helping an ecclesia with uh, extra component beside the kingdom uh, of God uh, doctrine. We also put in the apostolic and prophetic, okay, yeah. So you see, I better explain myself, otherwise people may say, what, what am I doing in the kingdom uh, training uh, platform? And actually, I feel uncomfortable, but you told me I can come in as an observer, okay? And I did explain to Eddie, if I'm running in the inner circle, in the inner track with all of you, then I cannot give you any input. Not to say my input is good, but I think my input is uh, constructive and for the uh, for, for the what they call propelling this kingdom move into another uh, higher level. Okay. Uh, so I've been always supportive of kingdom move. Uh, Amen. But, Hallelujah. But people are called differently. God called me to function in the, my uh, this kingdom concept in a different aspect. Yeah. But we are all in kingdom. Uh, uh, what you call both uh, doctrine. Uh, we do not subscribe to the old traditional way anymore. Because you see, in the, tr uh, uh, in the traditional church, very sad to say, the people have been indoctrinated. That's the word I use. First, touch not the anointed one. Then second, use the scripture to suffocate the people. Do not judge. Uh, it's between he and God. But if you study the scripture, that is the key. You say you always thought to study the scripture and you begin to, to dig into it. Even in the Old Testament, you read it, the word of God taught us, he say, when a brother sin, or even for, for this Abraham, God began to tell him, you say, you get, uh, what do you call, you begin to form leaders in each group. And then in the New Testament, he say, when one brother sin, bring two or three and go and see to the brother confront him and correct him so that is correction we do not judge the character uh, the person but we judge the action and whatever wrongdoing the word of god we have the liberty we have the authority to judge so we judge with a right motive so in the traditional church people are bound and no question is asked nobody there to ask the the pastor i would like to know where has the fun go to? And then they will tell you very conveniently, you want to know the statement of account? Please come to our office. Ah. So there was a case a brother wanted to know, went to the office, he wasn't allowed to enter into the office. So how, how to check the account? Ah. So it's excuses, excuses all along the way. So for those who want to move in the kingdom move, I strongly believe these are the core one. They have to be called out of that system then they can see, then they can follow what God wants them to do and what is in the word of God. Okay? Uh, so as long as they are in that structure, they cannot see, they cannot think, they cannot reason out for themselves. Thank you, Brother Reggie. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah, really, we appreciate you, Brother Joel. You know, uh, Praise God for you. Uh, uh, I pray that God will give you, you know, the the great mindset into supporting the work that you are doing right now because it's as long as this kingdom move, we are on the same page. Yeah. So we would like to really unite with anybody that is really doing the same thing, but not by name. All right, but by works. Because a lot of people have kingdom in their in their what they call setup, but then you go deeper, you find that actually is a human form of leadership which we don't want. We don't want any form of human leadership. 
but we submitted to our Christ. Yeah, amen. So anybody else like to say your two pens worth of thoughts? Now, serving God, I like to, to, to address this to you. Not everybody is a preacher. Not everybody is a worshiper. Not everybody, you know, can pray well. So we are called to do different things in the kingdom. All right? If you preach well, we can train you to be a good preacher. But if you cannot preach well, but you want to, we can help you to fulfill the plans of God in your life. That's what I do. I commit to doing this. I can tutor you to help you to grow. Yeah. As I've done to those who are available, I teach them. Okay. Many people have benefited from what I've taught them. So uh, we are here to help. We are not here to put you down, but to help you in which area that you're gifted in. You know, if you are into music, Eddie can help you. Okay. Eddie will help you in, into understanding how to have a good worship, okay? If you want to know about the Word of God, obviously, I'm the person that will give it to you. And Brother Michael is very good with the Word as well. And then later on, we will have Brother Joel to come and give us uh, his, uh, what you call, idea of God's Word as well. I believe that he is very well equipped with the Word of God, yeah? The Teresa and Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Brother Reggie. Um, um, through Upper Room, I think we also see a lot of changes. A lot of people came and also a lot of people also went away, went off, you know. Um, but basically, you know, through this, uh, I, you know, um, you have to function with your humility, humble ourselves. I think that is a, a main thing, you know, why some people came and then they left, you know. And many of them see, you know, some, not many, I would say, you know, the few that left, yeah. They see the, the trees, you know, they don't see the forest, you know, so they don't see the big picture. And um, the one that you mentioned, they are do best for the kingdom, you know, some of them the self, you know, I think God is also, you know, uh, revealing, um, you know, exposing, you know, some of us, you know, that, that yeah. you know, we can, and that's why they cannot function because God is exposing, you know, the, the, the weakness that is inside some of us, you know, um, so um yeah we are, we continue to pray you know every morning we have prayers and we will pray for those mm. that you know, that were left um yeah mm. they're like the lost sheep la. thank you yeah and thank you Mr. Teresa I also need to uh, mention some of my you know those uh, you know the supporters you know the support the leadership you know you know many of them here that is here you know right right now you know you know yeah. who you are is praying yeah. for the for the leadership and they are all here you know um those in upper room thank you very much um. All, the, all of you, you know, who are praying every morning. We come in at 6 o'clock and we're already praying. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, praise God that a lot of us do want to take the bitter God. And a lot of in the kingdom of God is first to take the bitter God. All right. There's a lot of things God needs to correct us because we all come from a very different mindset. We are changing, transforming ourselves into another mindset. And there's a lot of things to take out from our life. And it's not easy to take out all those things that are bad habits. So there's a lot of correction going on. That's why now I, I sense in a lot of people, they need to be corrected. There are people applying to come in here, you know. And I, I won't admit anybody until I'm very sure now that they want to be part of the kingdom move. They want to serve. All right. There isn't the point of training them to for the kingdom move is they are just come in to, to just uh, hear the message. That's not the intention of this teaching. This is to equip the people to be serving in the kingdom. So you've got no, no, no interest in the millennium reign, you shouldn't be here. All right? It's not for you because it's for people who are in the millennium reign because what you hear may be against the doctrine from the church where you come from because uh, we are moving on a very narrow path towards the kingdom. Amen? Yeah, Brother Reggie, I think um, I want to share uh, a bit on the journey how I yeah. end up 
new wine skin. I want to encourage everyone here. And you no, know, it started off when I attend the upper room, it's just as a uh, attend upper room to listen to the meeting and things like that. And I suddenly have an urge to start a new new wine scheme in Penang. But I tell you frankly, I have nobody. I only have uh, Clyde and uh, Han Xin. And uh, thank God that God bring people like Hazel and uh, Pauline into my group, you no. Know? And and the journey is not easy, you know. And and also along the way, uh, Han Xin drop off, James drop off, you know. Uh, went through uh, quite a lot of challenges, but I look back. Uh, actually, the person like myself, Hazel, Pauline, and Clyde, we benefit the most because we stay on and we do it. It's not easy. And looking back, uh, how Brother Reggie had trained me. Uh, just now I mentioned about flyer. You no, know, I was quite against working on the flyer. Thought let Reggie do it. You no, know? then I forced myself. Then I can do uh, good flyers today because I I I I challenge myself to do it even though I don't like to do it no but I, eventually I love doing it you know and things like teaching uh, uh, I learned from Brother Reggie how to teach and how to present and and I tell you through these two years of doing Kingdom Move uh, a new wine skin and also I learned the faith of. Uh, 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 wait for a lot to you know if there's no money means you have to close down as this already say but the lord have been faithful god have been giving and uh, the the answer is to give up you know like i reported my third quarter uh, new wine skin collected twenty nine thousand plus no i tell you and we gave up twenty nine thousand we did not we kept a few hundred dollars uh, ringgit only you know and they gave out you know and suddenly it gave me a few thousand you know uh, I won't mention him, uh, uh, those supporters who know uh, what I'm talking about, give uh, quite substantially into new wine skin, you know. And that really encouraged me. And now we are talking about doing some evangelistic work uh, by uh, uh, sending money to buy audio Bible to send to uh, uh, Nepal, uh, Nepal, you know. So, so things like that is happening. God is not static. The Lord, God is dynamic, you know. And I realized that through these years, I benefited a lot. Serving, serving really brought me a lot of satisfaction. I'm not tired, you know, even though I'm doing every week worship only one time, Sister Pauline uh, uh, back up, you know, and I, I have no problem doing it. You know, I have no complaint and I really enjoy. I told Clyde, you know, I asked Clyde, are you burdened by uh, every week we're doing this? He said, no, I'm enjoying it. Every Sunday, I look forward to Sunday, you know. I tell you, Clyde is one day going to take the gospel of the kingdom to Philippines. He is a potential leader, you know, and he understands kingdom move. So I'm just sharing this uh, uh, from my own perspective. Lah. My brothers and sisters, take the first step, you know, as brother already say, we can, step, we can set up more kingdom move uh, and you will be the one blessed the most, I tell you, when you take up the steps, take up the challenge and do it, lah, just like me. When I took it two years ago, I don't know whether I can do it. How long I can last, but uh, today I lasted. I even do uh, better than uh, what I expected. And this is how God works, lah. No, as as Brother Reggie sh uh, shared his uh, testimony, you know, you have the, the they have to step into the river, the river Jordan a bit before the river part. You know, if they don't step into the river Jordan, the water will never part. So you must take the first step if you want to serve God and serious about the kingdom move. Uh, take the first step, and God will open the the water of the river Jordan for you to cross over and do great things for him. Brother Reggie, that's all I need to encourage. Yeah, praise God for Brother Eddie. I need to say this appraisal right now about Brother Eddie. We have come a long way. We have been friends for a long time. He know about the kingdom move for a long time, but he can't see it like most of us can't see it until God reveal himself to us. Then when we see it, the rest is history. And today, I believe that Eddie is enjoying uh, really miraculous circumstances in his life. God has sorted out a lot of his problem, resolved a lot of issues of the past, and he's moving forward because God is removing the baggages. But more than that, I also observed that the way Eddie preached 
because I heard many, many sermons around the world. I preach in many churches and I've heard many sermons. And I can tell you that he has more substance in his preaching than many, many pastors in big churches. I can tell you that. It's solid. The word is solid. And the presentation is articulate. All right. And everything is moving in tandem to what God has intended for him. And at this age, doing this, I think it is a surprise to him what he has accomplished today. Mm. What he has accomplished throughout this short period of time is much more than many of the years he has been a believer. Am I right to say that, Eddie? Yeah, I accepted Christ in 1993, that's 31 years ago. And the last few years is the best part of my life. Because I know the word, very. I'm actually a very... Uh, uh, a leader in a full gospel businessman. I've been very, very public, you know, and I heard a lot of many messages from men of God uh, coming to speak in my meetings, you no, know? but those did not, I count those as uh, nothing compared to what I learned in the kingdom move. That's why I told uh, a few other people to me, just like Miles Monroe say, you ask me to preach any message, it's only one message, kingdom of God. That's my stand also now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wonderful. This is a clear example of what God can do to all of us. Okay? And uh, like he shares, is very true. Putting one feet first in the river Jordan will let you take the second step. Then the water can part for you. Amen. So thank you so much. I think it's wonderful. I got to go also. So yeah. good night to all of you. Have a good day. Good sleep. Uh, maybe we have one of you to say the ironic blessing before we leave. Wonderful time. Okay, somebody have not done it before. <laughs> then we all yeah, someone who has not done it before, please do it. Yeah. Maybe Sister Shirley Louis, would you like to do it? Uh, sorry, uh, Brother Raji, uh, I'm not prepared for it yet. Next time, okay. maybe. Thank you. Next time, uh, you have to volunteer. Next time, you don't say next time and then no next time. Uh. <laughs> Somebody volunteer. <la. laughs> hey, those from uh, uh, Breakfast with Jesus, Anna, every day you are saying it. <laughs> That's not so, yeah. <laughs> Quickly, don't waste time, you know. We all want to go to bed. Okay, Dorothy said. Yeah, Dorothy, hallelujah. Okay. It's from number 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, peace. Let's uh, all be dismissed by the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless all of you and your family and may his peace remain in your family and that, let there be unity among all of them, all of us, also in the kingdom of God. All Amen. these we Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody.